this countdown, we have the Growler Bear. The Growler Bear, or the Pizzly Bear, is a cross between a Polar Bear and a Brown Grizzly Bear. This actually happened naturally in the wild, which is kind of hard to believe. Basically, because of climate change destroying the bear's habitats, they started breeding with each other out of desperation, which is actually pretty sad. It's believed that the first growler bear was discovered in 2006. On April 16th, 2006, a hunter named Jim Martell was out hunting when he captured a growler bear. At first, he thought it was just a polar bear, but officials took a look at it and noticed it had strange features. Later, it was determined to be a growler bear or Pizzly Bear. It's really funny, to, it's really funny to say. In our ninth spot, we have a Zorse. Any guesses as to what this animal is mixed with? Well, it's a mix between a zebra and a horse, or sometimes a donkey too. Other people refer to them as Zebula, or Zebrul, or a zebra mule. These animals were created after crossbreeding a male zebra with a female horse. The offspring look more like a horse than a zebra, but they still got the identifying stripes. The first Zorse was created during the 19th century by Charles Darwin. Now they are still around to this day, but they are extremely rare. This is because Zorses are infertile or sterile. They can't reproduce on their own. So the only way to get more of these bad boys is to get someone to crossbreed them themselves. Moving on to number eight, we have the Jag Lion or Jag Leon, I don't know. It's a kind of a weird name, not gonna lie, but this animal is a cross between a Jaguar and a lion. And these are actually naturally born. The first Jag Lion was unintentionally bred. It happened when a lion and a jaguar coexisted in the same zoo together. They were raised together and you know, one thing led to another and boom, baby jag lion. Not gonna lie, these things are beautifully terrifying. They are so unique and cool looking, but also I would never wanna come face to face with one. Now, let me share with you a quick little love story between a jaguar named Diablo and a lion named Lola. The two were raised side by side and were inseparable. When Lola got mature, they kept Diablo away from her so that they would never mate. But whenever they were apart, both animals would grow depressed. It got so bad to the point where Lola wouldn't even eat. So they brought them back together and bada bing bada boom, they had two babies together. So cute. Moving on to number seven, we have the human Z. It is so weird and uncomfortable putting this one on the list. But a human Z is a cross between a human and a chimpanzee. Yeah, I already know what you're thinking, but no, not that. Let me explain. Serious attempts have been made throughout the years to cross a chimp with a human. Since we're so similar in a genetic way, people believe that it's possible to do this. Ilya Ivanish Ivanov was the first person to attempt to create a human-chimp hybrid. I believe he started in 1918 and continued these experiences throughout the 1920s. During that time, the Soviet Union was also doing the same experiments. In 2019, rumor has it that a team of researchers from the Salk Institute from Biological Studies in the US successfully completed this. It's kind of creepy, I know. In our sixth spot, we have the Iron Age Pig. This is a big, mean old pig, literally. So the Iron Age Pig is a cross between a domestic pig and a wild boar. That's just like so wrong to me on so many levels. Like, poor little Miss Piggy. Now, look at this thing. It's huge and looks tough and mean. In fact, they are considered very hostile animals. It's because wild boars are typically more aggressive. That's one of the traits that gets passed along to their offsprings. Now they get their name because this pig has many characteristics of domesticated animals from the Iron Age period. Hello, there you go, Iron Age pig. It's quite fascinating. These pigs are generally bred in Europe for the sole purpose of selling and eating them. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the green sea slug. As strange as this one is, it's actually really interesting. Honestly though, this has to be the weirdest hybrid on this list. And that's because it's part animal and part plant. Yeah, it's a mix between a sea slug and algae. Yeah, yeah, algae. This sea slug was going around eating algae and eventually the algae became part of its DNA. It's very strange. Soon green sea slugs were born and contained chlorophyll, just like a plant. In fact, this is the first animal able to make chlorophyll like a plant. They literally can turn solar energy into food. 
Again, it's quite weird, but also fascinating. In our fourth spot, we have the Wolfin, which is really fun and funny to say. So a Wolfin is a mix between an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale. In fact, these are considered very, very rare. The first recorded Wolfin was born in 1981 in Tokyo SeaWorld. Sadly, he passed away after 200 days. Now, the first Wolfin born in the US was at Sea Life Park in Hawaii in 1985, but she had trouble reproducing. Her baby Wolfins sadly passed away. Some say they have seen Wolfins out in the wild, but these sightings have never been confirmed. But if you do see one, it's very rare. Coming in at number three, we have the Enviro Pig. Okay, this one, I take it back. This one is probably the weirdest one on this list. Basically, an enviro pig is an environmentally friendly pig. Basically, pig's excrements are high in phosphorus. This phosphorus then ends up in lakes and rivers and oceans and can cause a boom of algae. So scientists were like, hey, let's just breed a pig with less toxic waste. And that's what they did. Enviro pigs are pigs with up to 65% less phosphorus in their excrements. This pig was first created in 1999 at the University of Guelph's farm in Canada. This pig had its phytase gene attached to a piece of mouse DNA. Basically, in the end, it made the pig produce an enzyme to help it better digest plant phosphorus, which is a nutrient in its feed. Voila, from there, enviro pigs were born. In our second spot, we have the Belgian super cow. Now, when they said super cow, they weren't joking because take a load of this cow. It's monstrous. As many of you guys know, cows are my favorite animal, but this one terrifies me. It's massive. Like, look at its muscles. I'm sorry, but no animal should be as ripped as that. So basically, this super cow was created back in the 1800s when Belgian scientists and farmers mixed native cattle with shorthorn cattle. Then over the time, they would select the biggest and strongest offsprings of each variety and get them to breed together. So on and so on, bam, you got this super cow, which is definitely the biggest and strongest. So maybe let's stop doing that because this cow is soon gonna get too big for its own good and like take over the world or something. And in our number one spot, we have the human pig hybrid. Yes, this is a real thing. Scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Sciences in California have created a human-pig hybrid. Now you're probably wondering, why on earth would they do this? Well, they did this in hopes that one day they could grow human organs inside of pigs and other animals instead of waiting for a donor. So in 2017, an embryo was placed in an adult pig for four weeks. Then this was taken out and analyzed. And the embryo survived and contained some human cells. Now they're going to figure out if pig embryos can handle enough human cells to create human organs. It's very creepy in my opinion. Now with the zebroids. When a zebra meets another equine species such as a horse or a donkey, this happens. Depending on what the zebra gets intimate with, they can produce a zorse or even a zonkey. Just look at these things. They're like so strange looking, but on a genetic level, things get even stranger because the two species crossbred such as a horse and a zebra actually have a very different number of chromosomes that make up their genetic code. Now normally this would be a major hurdle when it comes to two different species interbreeding, but when it comes to zebroids, they're just like, screw you mother nature. On a side note, after hearing the word zonkey, I now know what I'm gonna call my first child. Excellent. Trotting in at number nine now, we've got the Growler Bear. If you just cannot decide which is the coolest bear between a polar and a grizzly bear, well, meet the Growler Bear, which is a mix between the two. Although the polar bears are found in the Arctic and the grizzly bears in North America, their habitats do sometimes overlap, and when the bears meet, Growler bears are born. One possible explanation for this is that global warming is melting the polar bears' icy homes and forcing them south into grizzly bear territory. But now we are on to number eight, which is the beefalo. And now I'm hungry. Unlike a lot of animals on this list, the beefalo is actually fertile, which means they can produce their own offspring. They themselves are the product of crossbreeding domestic cattle, the cows you see out in the field, and American bison. As you can see from the size and shape of these things, they were bred for their meat production. And it turned out their meat tends to be lower in fat and cholesterol than beef and less damaging to rangeland than cattle. I bet their milk is like steroids. 
Hmm. But on that note, we're going to talk about the wolf dog, which is our number seven. And I'm going to give you seven guesses which two animals make a wolf dog. I really hope nobody got this one wrong because it is, of course, a canine hybrid of a wolf and a dog. Now, usually the parent that's a dog will be a breed that resembles a wolf. So you're more likely to see a wolf being bred with a German Shepherd than you are with a poodle. That would just be weird. Wolf dogs' appearances can vary wildly, and there is no real way of guessing what they'll look like until they're born because the traits they inherit from either parent can be extremely random. Now, any pet that has wolf dog heritage at least four generations back can be considered a wolf dog. So you guys should check your family tree, and if you see a great grandmother that's a little bit too hairy, maybe you're part wolf dog. But next up, we're going to look at the Narluga because that is our number six. As you might have guessed from the name, these are the product of narwhals and belugas. Now, narwhals might look like a fictional cross between a unicorn and a seal, but they are real. And if they are bred with a beluga whale, they make a narluga. This occurrence is extremely rare though. And the only properly documented example of it happening in the wild was when scientists found one of them on the coast of West Greenland. They can be mainly identified by their massive heads, which has got me thinking that maybe I'm part Narluga. It explains a lot. Anyway, we are now halfway through our mashup of the animal kingdom, and we're at number five, which is the leopard. A leopard is the product of a male leopard and a lioness. The first documented case of this was one that was bred in India in 1910, but they have since been bred in zoos all around the world. Although the crossbreeding of these kind of cats are fascinating to the public, animal welfare groups have criticized the breeding of the leopards. Although they may look really cool, leopards often die as cubs, and if they do make it to adulthood, they have a very painful life with a number of different health problems. So just remember guys, just because something looks cool doesn't necessarily mean it is, like onyx. Onyx sucks. I've been waiting so long for a chance to fit that into a video, but now we're at number four, and we're looking at karmas. If you give a camel from Asia and a llama from South America some private time alone, you will come back months later to find a karma. Well, not quite. They were actually first produced using artificial insemination to create an animal that had the size and strength of a camel, but the more easygoing personality of a llama. Anyone that's ever seen a camel will know they're a bit grumpy. Well, sadly, it didn't go to plan. Karmas took after their camel parents and have proved to be very uncooperative with humans. I guess you could really say they've got the hump. Or not, whatever. Let's just move on to our number three now, which is Savannah Cats. Now, if you want something a bit more exotic than a normal house cat, then maybe the Savannah Cat is for you. This is what you get when you mix a wild African cat with an everyday domestic house cat. They gained popularity among breeders in the 1980s, but it wasn't registered as an official breed until 2001. Unlike domestic cats, they are very social creatures. They're also bigger than house cats and can reach 25 pounds in weight. And the best part is that Savannah Cats actually use litter boxes when they're domesticated. I might get one just to train my cat. Damn you, Sadie. Time flies when you're crossbreeding, and it's already time to announce our number two, which is Wolfins. Now, if this list was made purely on names alone, Wolfins would win it for me. But before you guys freak out and are like, wow, no way, this isn't real, whales are way too big. Well, you're technically right, but these whales are called false killer whales. They look a lot like killer whales, but they actually belong to the dolphin family. So when you breed them with a bottlenose dolphin, you get the wolfin, which is exactly half of either parent. Their bottlenose parent parent has 88 teeth, for example, and their false killer whale parent has 44. The wolfin child will sit right in the middle with 66 teeth. All right, time for a quick recap of all our weird and wonderful hybrids. We've looked at beefaloes, zebroids, and wolf dogs, but the one hybrid in the world that has captured the public's attention and got people interested in animal hybrids more than any other is our number one, and it's the liger. A liger is born when a male lion breeds with a female tiger. They are the largest living cats on the planet. Lions and tigers Tigers have growth inhibitors in their genes which help to control their size and stop them from growing too big. But when they produce a liger together, these growth inhibitors don't seem to be active, which means ligers can reach incredible sizes. Some female ligers can grow to 10 feet in length and weigh more than 700 pounds. To make things even crazier, you can then breed male ligers with female tigers and lions. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Dolly the sheep. We had to start this list off with Dolly today because she really set the stage for everything on this list to come. You may have heard of Dolly the Sheep before, and that is because she made history in 1996 when she was born. This is because she was the very first mammal to be cloned from an adult somatic cell. The process of cloning to create her involved nuclear transfer from a cell taken from the mammary gland. Basically, they transfer 
the nucleus from the adult cell into an unfertilized premature egg that had its nucleus removed and boom cloned sheep. This was huge for the scientific community because of the fact that it not only showed that cloning can be successful in mammals but also because it showed that a cloned organism can be produced from a mature cell from a specific body part. While Dolly made history, she also sadly only lived a relatively short life. She ended up being euthanized just before her 7th birthday because of the fact that she had a progressive lung disease as well as arthritis, both of which are said not to be linked to her cloning origins. I guess it's kind of cool that Dolly existed and the fact that we have these scientific abilities is amazing, but there's also something pretty ominous about it. I just hope we use these powers to do things like bringing back extinct animals, maybe, rather than some weird mad scientist type of stuff. In our number 9 spot today we have Sam Rupa. After the birth of Dolly the Sheep, scientists everywhere began trying their hand at cloning and that is when Sam Rupa was born. Back in 2009, Sam Rupa was born in India and was a mura buffalo, which is known as being the best known milking buffalo, since these animals can be capable of producing 35 kilograms of milk a day. The birth of Sam Rupa marked a breakthrough in the country because it put India on the map as one of the few countries at the time who had the capabilities to clone, and this was all done using a new at the time landmark technique which was called hand guided cloning. The scientists who helped to create Sam Rupa worked on the calf for four years, so it's clear that they were all very excited about its birth. Unfortunately, however, shortly after Sam Rupa's birth, things went seriously wrong. Just five days after birth, Sam Rupa unfortunately succumbed to a lung infection and passed away. While the scientists weren't able to save the animal, it is very clear that its birth and short life helped scientists in remarkable ways that went on to inform them in future experiments and projects. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Pyrenean Ebex. The Pyrenean Ebex is an animal that went extinct around 2000. In a horrible turn of events, the last one was a female named Celia, and she was killed in an awful falling tree incident. A subspecies of the Spanish Ebex, the Pyrenean Ebex were native to the Pyrenees Mountains on the border of Spain and France. Back in the medieval ages, their population was reduced drastically to an endangered level. This is due to two things, being hunted as well as the spread of human disease. Flash forward to 2003, however, and scientists tried to bring them back to life. This is the first extinct creatures that scientists ever tried to clone. That is absolutely crazy. For seven minutes. DNA from Celia, the last living individual of the species, was taken and implanted into the womb of a domestic goat. From here, the clone was in fact born, but due to lung complications was unable to survive for longer than seven minutes. It was a short life, but a monumental one that definitely broke new ground in the scientific world. In our number 7 spot today, we have Garima 1. Garima is similar to Sam Rupa that we already talked about, and in fact she was born in the same place, the National Dairy Research Institute, just shortly after Sam Rupa, and luckily her birth did end up being more successful considering she made it past the first year of life. She was actually cloned on June 6, 2009, and things seemed to be going quite well until around June and July of 2011. Garima was created through the same hand-guided cloning technique as Sam Rupa, so it's clear that the technique was evolving and getting better, but things still unfortunately went awry. When things took a turn for the worst, doctors struggled to figure out exactly what was the problem, but eventually it was revealed that her problem was with her heart. Researchers revealed that her heart was abnormally overweight and much larger in size than other buffaloes her same age, and this likely led to the complications she faced that sadly culminated in her passing in August of 2011. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Argali. In the earlier days of cloning experiments, scientists attempted to clone an Argali, which is also known as a type of mountain sheep. These sheep are known to roam the highlands of Western East Asia, the Himalayas, Tibet, and the Altai Mountains. The reason they wanted to clone these sheep is because they are important to the ecosystems they live in, and unfortunately they are a threatened species. Now I know there is controversy over the cloning of threatened or extinct species, but personal opinions aside, they were making this attempt to see if this could be a viable way to potentially save a species. Unfortunately, however, these attempts would prove to be futile. Using the same techniques used in the instance of Dolly the sheep, the somatic cell nuclear transfer, while they believed it would be promising, all attempts to clone the mammal failed to produce any viable results, and thus, modern science wasn't able to assist in the continuation of this species. But in good news, while the species is still threatened, it is still around and not quite endangered, although its life is mainly threatened due to trophy hunters and ranchers. In our number 5 spot today, we have the gar. A gar is a species of wild cattle that is native to South Asia and South 
Southeast Asia, and unfortunately they are listed as a vulnerable species on the IUCN Red List. And they have been since 1986. This is exactly why, in 2001, scientists decided it was time to try and clone one. With a population that has declined over 70% in the last three generations, they seemed like a perfect candidate to become the first ever endangered species to be cloned. In 2001, at the Trans Ova Genetic Center in Sioux Center, Iowa, they were able to birth a clone Gar. They obviously used Gar DNA, but used a domestic cow as a surrogate mother to carry the clone. This of course was a huge breakthrough, but unfortunately the life of the Gar was cut short as the calf passed away within 48 hours of its birth. Although this is obviously terrible, I guess the upside is that it is believed that the calf passed due to dysentery, which is not thought to have been related to the cloning process, which does mean that although the outcome wasn't as predicted or hoped, the cloning could still be considered a success. In our number 4 spot today we have Injaz. With a name that means achievement, she clearly was exactly that, because Injaz was the first camel clone ever produced. She was born back in 2009 at the Camel Reproduction Center in Dubai, and she certainly was a proud accomplishment for all of those who worked to create and raise her. In fact, the cloning of Injaz was such a success that she lived for over a decade. Her birth prompted the center to continue cloning camels, which they did about 20 to 25 times a year in the time after Injaz was born. She broke ground once again when she proved that cloned camels could in fact conceive and give birth naturally, and she did so a few times, but in the end, it would be this that led to her demise. On her fourth calf, as she carried it, it grew to be too big for her to carry, which unfortunately led to dystocia late in her pregnancy. Scientists did their best to save her, but unfortunately they lost both of them. Everyone who worked to care for Injaz was rightfully extremely upset at her passing, but they clearly used her and her success as a starting point for what was to come. Now this center is turning out dozens of cloned camels every year, some going for $55,000. Not sure how I feel about that, but... You know, whatever. In our number three spot today, we have the Bantang. Back in 2003, scientists at the Advanced Cell Technology of Worcester, Massachusetts, were ecstatic when they successfully birthed a clone Bantang, which is an endangered species of cattle. To do this, they actually took frozen tissues from a male of the species that passed away many years earlier in 1980. They used these skin cells and inserted the nuclei into cow eggs, and a cow was used as a surrogate mother. They attempted this with 16 pregnancies, two of which came to term. With the success of one clone did come the birth of another identical twin who was born to a different cow mother, but despite being carried to term and birthed, this clone was not as expected. It was twice the normal birth weight, which quickly proved to be a very negative sign. As for the clone who was considered a success, it was hand raised at the San Diego Wild Animal Park's Infant Isolation Unit. Unfortunately, however, due to an injury that the animal got when it was less than 7 years old, it did end up passing away, which meant that sadly the clone only lasted for about half the expected lifespan for this species of animal. In our number 2 spot today we have the woolly mammoth. We would certainly be missing a very important animal on this list if we didn't include the woolly mammoth. These guys were of course a species of mammoth and in fact they were one of the last in line of the mammoth species. Because of the fact that in both Alaska and Siberia there were frozen carcasses discovered, they are actually one of the most well studied extinct creatures. Exactly why or how they were driven to extinction is widely debated, and another thing people like to debate is whether or not we should try and bring them back. There was a genome project completed in 2015, and since then it has been proposed the species could be revived through a few different means, but no one has yet taken the leap. Here's the thing though, there's a new company that is pretty set on de-extincting woolly mammoth, and they have a new investor. This investor is called InQtel, and they are registered as a non-profit venture capital firm that is funded by the CIA. They claim that the interest in this company is less about mammoths and more about the capability to do such crazy projects. I know this is more like a future project that might happen, but when we're talking about a huge animal like the woolly mammoth, we have to bring it up. Okay, I live in Canada. That's where the woolly mammoth would also live, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like it just has consequences for me, so I'm concerned. In our number one spot today, we have the Morian viviparis tree snail. This was a species of air-breathing tropical land snails that were endemic 
Atlantic to French Polynesia, and their near extinction was caused by a chain of events that happened after something humans did. The African land snail was introduced into Tahiti in 1967 as a food source, but it quickly escaped and began to destroy crops. Biologists wanted to attempt to control the African land snail, so they decided to introduce the rosy wolf snail to the area in 1977. This went absolutely haywire as the rosy wolf snail didn't just control the population of African land snails, but rather started to eradicate all of the snails that were native to the area, which of course includes our little friend. So this one little introduction led to them being totally extinct in the wild. These snails still exist in captivity and there have been attempts to re-release them into the wild, maybe clone them to boost their population numbers, but unfortunately the rosy wolf snail continues to prey upon them. So at this point, researchers are unsure if it will ever be possible for them to live in the wild again. Coming in at number 10, we have the devil lamb. In South Africa, inhabitants of a village were shocked and disturbed by the birth of a human looking lamb. Villagers were convinced that either bestiality or witchcraft were at play when the human looking lamb was birthed, although sadly the creature was stillborn. While DNA samples confirmed that the creature was indeed a lamb, many locals were convinced that the dead sheep was the work of the devil or a bad omen of things to come. Check out this goat at number 9. In April 2016, a kid was born that looked like an actual human kid. A farmer from Felder in Malaysia posted the image of an animal on social media. Unfortunately, the baby goat didn't live very long, but it did indeed look like a hairy bipedal mammal. Some were saying that the goat looked human, but to be honest, I think it looks more like a baby Chewbacca. It definitely has human like lips and a nose, but I, I don't know, I'm just sad that this little guy didn't make it. Coming in at number 8, we have this cow. A cow born in India with human features caused a stir in 2017. Cows are seen as sacred in India, so when a calf was born with human like features, people thought that it was an avatar of the Hindu god Vishnu. Locals flocked to see the calf, which died shortly after birth. Despite being dead, Hindus placed the animal in a glass box and laid it with floral garlands. One worshipper said that God has taken birth in the body of a local cow, which I personally think is a bit extreme. He said that a lot of people were there to worship the cow and seek his blessings. We have another goat at number 7, this one was born in Argentina. A genetic disorder meant that the kid was born with a facial deformity. The farmer who owned the animal presented it to cameras and video footage was uploaded to YouTube. Okay, look at this dog at number 6, like really look at it, look at it in the eye. Are you guys creeped out because I am? Tonic the Poodle Shih Tzu Mix has a very human looking demeanour about him, like he looks like he knows things. Pictures of the pooch went viral in 2013 as his shelter photos were listed on Pet Finder. He's definitely very cute but when I look at him I feel like he knows more than he should, like who was this dog in a former life? Ok so this is animals born with human faces but this animal looks like it was very much born with specifically human teeth. We have the Promachathesis succulus at number 5. This squid looks like an angry killer ready to bite, like hung, hung, hung. who knew these critters were living down there screaming silently into the ocean. While it looks like this squid has a human set of teeth, these are actually folded lip flaps. Gross. This squid might be confused if it saw us too, but it's unlikely that we will ever come face to face with it because it lives so far down in the ocean. Coming into number 4, we have this cat with a human face. Although I say human face, it actually kind of looks like a semi human werewolf. Bizarre images of a cat with a human like face were circulated on the internet in October 2014. People were claiming it was taken in Western Malaysia. Footage of the creature was also recorded on a phone camera. The creature kind of looks like a cross between a cat and Gollum from Lord of the Rings. It was on all fours and it had fangs, but like kind of a very human like face. The image caused so much fuss that local police in Malaysia were forced to make a statement saying that the creature was fake, although was it actually? Meet this pig at number 3. Now this story actually comes from our sister news channel Inform Overload. Back in 2014, Dave Warple reported that a pig had been born with a human looking face in Vietnam. First reported on Tomo News, the animal appears to be a pig with a decidedly humanoid appearance, but people in Laos where it was born speculated it was the work of bestiality, which I mean that just is isn't how things work. To be fair though, I don't really know how anything works and I'm ready to question anything I ever thought was true here at number 2. We have this pig with a human 
face and a human looking penis on its head. This piglet was videoed gasping for air and was widely shared on Chinese social media. The piglet was the only one of the litter of 19 to have such an unusual deformity. It seemed like it had a human face with the addition of what looked like a flaccid penis on its head which is extremely unfortunate. Eyewitness Wu Kung was one of a dozen people who went to see the piglet and he said that it actually really did look like it had a penis growing out of its forehead. There it is, I can't not look at it. Finally at number 1, a weird but very cute and happy story, we have this lamb that looks like an old man. In 2015 a female lamb went viral when she was born in a Russian village. Sheep are born in Russia all the time so what was the big deal? Well this lamb looked like a grumpy old human man. The Russian farmer the lamb belongs to said that she had normal looking parents, it must have just been a deformity. Residents of the town flocked to see the sheep, although it is said that the lamb scared the children. The farmer said that he thought that she was a beauty and refused to sell her to the local circus and like, isn't that love?